Hey everybody, it's Beth. Welcome to Infinite Garden. If you've been following my channel, you know that I made a promise to myself not to buy anything new in the categories of makeup, perfume, skincare, clothing, shoes, and accessories for six months starting February 1 until the end of July. And I'm coming to you today with my tail between my legs because I broke that promise to myself very recently when I made the decision to buy a new outfit. If you want to hear more about this, please stay tuned. If you're new to my channel, welcome. This is an affirming space where we celebrate self-acceptance, authentic personal style, and sometimes the expansion of consciousness. I'll put some cards up to my no buy videos that I've made in the past so you can catch up with where we are now. But I made it all the way through February, March, April, and May adhering to my strict no buy. When I made this pledge in January, I looked ahead through July and my calendar looked pretty clear. For the previous two years, 2020, 2021, my calendar was clear. I wasn't doing a lot of the things I normally do. I wasn't socializing, going to weddings, I wasn't traveling. None of these things were happening. And for those two years, I was really kind of coasting on the clothes that I had. I added a little bit, but clothing was uh, not the category where I was obsessively shopping or over consuming. And it never really has been. I tend to be a relative minimalist in my wardrobe. I like really high quality things and I buy a few pieces a season to refresh my wardrobe. And then I wear my clothes over and over again. I'm a proud outfit repeater. This year has turned out to be really different. My 2022 social calendar is really packed, actually. I have a lot of stuff going on. There have been a lot of celebrations and plans that were put on hold the previous two years that now people are scheduling. So this year, my summer calendar looks super different from 2021 and 2020. I have more formal events. I have more work-related events that are in the evenings. And I have, just generally speaking, way more places to be and more stuff to do. And honestly, my summer wardrobe, I can say, was the most neglected of my clothes. I was looking at my clothes and trying to figure out how I was going to make it all work. And I knew in my heart that I was compromising in a couple of cases just to make the no-buy work. So all of that is for context. Let me tell you what happened. So I had to bring my car in to get the brakes replaced and then just other general maintenance. So I was looking at about three hours worth of auto repair and the dealership offered to let me have a shuttle ride to wherever I wanted to go. And since I was too far from my home, they couldn't bring me home, I said they could take me to the mall. The dealership is by the best mall in the region and I knew at a minimum I could at least have a nice time, maybe get a cup of coffee, maybe have a nice lunch, look around. I hadn't been to the mall since December and I frankly wanted to go. I don't go to the mall very often, but I really do like it. I had the shuttle drop me off at Nordstrom. I can honestly say I didn't see anything at Nordstrom that tempted me. I took my time, I had nowhere to be, I had time to kill. So I really spent time going through the different racks and looking at the new clothes, feeling the fabric, looking at the prices, really taking a look at everything. I found a lot of garments made from synthetic fabrics with price tags in the, like the six to $700 range. So a polyester dress for $600. So I made my way through Nordstrom and I felt really secure in my footing that I was gonna be fine. There was nothing to tempt me. Then I went to Aritzia, which is a store with multiple different brands and I found nice stuff in that shop before. And when I was there, to me, I didn't see a big difference between what Aritzia was offering and then what you would see at a shop like Zara. It felt like something I might have wanted to wear when I was in my 20s. So I did feel a little bit of that like demographic gap between what I was looking for and what Aritzia was offering. So I was able to move on. I eventually made my way to Zara just because I do enjoy looking at Zara. I, I don't know why it's the only fast fashion brand that sometimes gets me a little bit. I think it's fun to try on clothes there because some of the fashions are outside of my norm and it's nice to try things on. I was very tempted at Zara by a pair of black kind of dress shorts with brass sailor buttons on the side. They were lined, they were just the right length and they were kind of like loose fitting. I really liked them and thought they were cute. But in the end, I decided that a pair of synthetic fabric shorts from Zara were not going to be something I was going to break my no buy over. It was easy for me to hang up those shorts and move on. I treated myself to lunch at P.F. Chang's, which is kind of like a thing I like to do when I'm alone at the mall. I don't necessarily recommend it if I'm with somebody, but if I'm there by myself, that's usually where 
or I'll sneak off to and grab a little lunch. So at this point, I knew I had spent my hours in the mall. I was feeling kind of smug about not necessarily finding anything I wanted. And I wandered out of P.F. Chang's back into the mall and I decided I wanted to check in on the brand new Ralph Lauren store. My friends, I'm here to tell you that it was in the Ralph Lauren store where my iron will converted into mulberry silk and I broke my no buy with a new outfit. If you watched my video about my super early no buy check-in, I shared in that video that I just watched the Super Bowl halftime show and I was absolutely out of my mind in love with the outfit that Snoop Dogg wore to perform at the halftime show. I shared in that video and I maintain today that his outfit at the halftime show was I think the most exciting fashion moment in 2022 and yes, I watched the Met Gala red carpet coverage. I'm standing by that. So I'm in the Ralph Lauren store and I'm looking first at their purple label clothes which are outside of my budget but you know, I like to look at them while I'm there. And I admired a beautiful pair of linen pants and an absolutely exquisite linen and lace white dress. So I was just enjoying being around these beautiful clothes. It was deeper in the store in the polo section where I encountered the item that I could not resist. I saw this outfit on a mannequin in the polo section of the Ralph Lauren store and it was as if time stopped. I saw this outfit and I knew in my bones that I needed this outfit. So I asked to try this on. The woman who was helping me, hey Carol, told me that this particular item was consistently selling right out. They, they would get a shipment and then they would sell out immediately. In US sizes, they had a size 12 top and size six bottoms. So once I had this on, I felt that intense pull to purchase this. There was one part of me that was saying, what are you doing? You're on a no buy, you said you wouldn't do this and here you are, you brought yourself to the mall for three hours, brought yourself into one of your favorite stores, tried on an outfit that looks like something Snoop Dogg would wear and now you're out of your mind and about to buy something that you don't need. That was one side that I was thinking. This is what the other side was saying. This is the most exciting piece of clothing you have seen in years. This is navy blue, your favorite color. Shirt and pants are both made of silk, one of your favorite fabrics. The price compares to these polyester dresses you were seeing at Nordstrom, and these are actually well made. The print is fabulous. I can pair the shirt with a navy blue skirt and easily wear this to work. I can also pair the shirt with jeans and I can make this look like a chic weekend or casual outfit as well. These pants are going to look fantastic with a tank top or with a short crop sweater or even a good t-shirt. And the two pieces together are something that I feel like I could wear to fashionable events throughout the summer and well into the fall. We have a trip planned in the fall where I think this is gonna be the perfect thing to bring. So as I was sitting there, I was moving through all of the events that I have and all of the different ways that I could wear this, this outfit and all of the ways that it actually was turning out to be a really good choice. And I could tell in my heart that this is something that was a really good buy for me. I could tell that I wasn't working impulsively, that this wasn't an unconscious shopping choice, but instead I had found something of good quality in my budget that I could immediately deploy into at least five different events I have on my calendar where I was already wondering what I was going to wear. I'm planning to wear this outfit over and over again in the very near term. So here's the dramatic part of the story. Once I decided that I wanted to buy this outfit, I also knew that I had to order it. There wasn't any stock on the floor in my sizes. So I knew what sizes I wanted to order and the sales associate said, this is perfect, we'll just go online, we'll order it, I'll have it shipped to you quickly, no problem. So she ran my card and it was denied because of a fraud alert. And I was like, of course, I haven't been shopping. And suddenly out of nowhere, after months of zero activity, there's a relatively large purchase at the Ralph Lauren store at the mall, not very close to where I live. The bank was right to protect me from that. So I was trying to unlock it from the app, but I had recently updated my information on the app and the alert was going to some email address that I didn't have linked to my phone and I was, it just wasn't working. It was completely locked up. So I instead decided that I would use a credit card and the credit card that I used is linked with my husband and the way that that one's set up is that the fraud alerts go to his phone. As soon as we swiped the credit card, that got rejected too, also for fraud and the alert went to my husband. He was in the middle of something, didn't see his text, and so he wasn't able to release the fraud alert. So here I was in the Ralph Lauren store, ready to break my no-buy, ready to buy an outfit, and 
everything that I would use to make this purchase was protecting me from making it. It was blocking me from making the purchase. So of course it was exactly at this time when I got a call from the auto shop saying that the shuttle was ready to come and get me. You know, could I be ready in 10 minutes at the door? So I said to the sales associate, listen, if my chaos isn't going to allow this transaction to be completed in the next 10 minutes, I'm gonna have to go, but like, here's my number. Let's stay in touch. I need to, I need to talk to my husband. I need to get home. I need to release these fraud holds so I can actually make this transaction and I'll be in touch with you. What was funny is that when I went to the dealership to pay the bill for my auto repair, the same cards worked perfectly well. I was definitely allowed to pay for my brakes and my new windshield wipers, but not for a mulberry silk bandana outfit from Ralph Lauren. So anyway, I got home and I had enough time to think. I was thinking, okay, the stars have a line to block this purchase. My will isn't strong enough to stop me from buying this outfit, but everything out of my control seems to be conspiring to block it. Is this something that is for my own good or should I actually like take measures to complete this transaction? And I gave myself time to think about it. And I looked at my calendar of the things that I've got to do, where I've got to be, and I actually looked at my closet one more time to see what I might have. And I took a moment, I reflected on it, and I said, I actually really want this outfit. This solves a lot of problems for me. I'm going to be able to wear this in a bunch of different ways over time and feel great in it. And I actually really want this. I got in touch with my bank or whatever and I was able to get, um, get clearance to make this purchase and I got the information to the sales associate and she went ahead and ordered the outfit. Within a couple of days, I received my package. I tried on the clothes, they fit perfectly. I'm really excited that I have them. I know exactly where I'm going to wear these different pieces either together or separately over the next couple of months and I have truly no regrets for buying them. I'm really glad I chose to break my no buy for this item. So is my no buy dead? Not exactly. I'm officially letting myself off the hook for clothes and shoes and accessories. My closet is looking a little thin in these areas and if I do find exactly the right thing for myself right now that I feel like is a good buy and makes sense and isn't like a unconscious compulsive buy, I'm going to let myself stock my closet in this way. I am going to continue my no buy with perfume for the foreseeable future, absolutely through the end of July and maybe beyond. I'll check in when I get to the end of July. I really don't need to spend a dime on any new perfumes really the rest of this calendar year. So I am gonna check back in on that. I really don't need any new color makeup either, especially eyeshadow blushes, bronzers, and lipsticks. I have more than I can use and I really should focus on using what I have for the rest of the year. In terms of skincare, I'm going to continue to work through everything in my skincare, um, my arsenal, in my stock, work through all of that, and then just continue to streamline my skincare routine so I'm not wastefully acquiring stuff I can't use before it expires. I learned a lot from that. I'm going to stay on that horse. Skincare, makeup, clothes, that, that's everything. So that's it, everybody. I hope you're not too disappointed in me. I gave it my best shot. I think I underestimated how busy my summer was going to be and really what my wardrobe had to offer for summer events. It was just a little, I think I miscalculated what I had. And after a few years of not really having much to do in the summertime, I lost touch with how thin my wardrobe really was in some of these categories. So no regrets on my part, but I did feel like I needed to come clean and share this experience just because I know a lot of you have found it inspiring and you need to know that I, I fell short of my goal. But this has been a really good experience for me to confront my unconscious consumption. I don't think I've gotten to the bottom of all of it. I think there's more for me to learn about myself, but this was like a good first attempt at trying to learn some of the unconscious behaviors that I engage in as a result of just, you know, online shopping, scrolling through Instagram, looking at buying things as entertainment, all of this stuff that we're kind of like trained to do. I'm trying to see where I can unlearn it and it's a lot harder than I thought it was. Man, it really like a lot, lot harder than I thought it was. That's the story of how I broke my no buy. I hope you're all doing well out there and I hope you all have a fantastic week ahead. Thank you so much for watching. Talk soon.